वेलकम टू द सेशन फ्रेंड्स टुडे वी आर टॉकिंग अबाउट द कंजर्वेशन ऑफ बायोडाइवर्सिटी एज वी नो दैट बायोडाइवर्सिटी मींस द वैरायटी ऑफ वेरियस लिविंग फॉर्म्स वैरायटी ऑफ डिफरेंट काइंड ऑफ एनिमल्स एज वेल एज प्लांट्स इज कॉल्ड एज द बायोडाइवर्सिटी फॉर एग्जांपल सपोज इफ वी आर इमेजिन फॉर अ फॉरेस्ट सो वी कैन इमेजिन दैट देयर आर मैनी लार्ज प्लांट देयर मे बी सम स्मॉल प्लांट सम हर्ब सम श्रब्स सो grasses will be there so we can imagine if we are imagine a forest we cannot uh, uh, left the animals also so there will be some herbivorous animals like some insects as well as grasshopper goat and there will be some carnivorous animals like tiger lion and some scavengers like vultures eagle so these can be there as well as decomposers are also there so if i want to say that if there are a variety of organisms are present in a particular area it is called as the biodiversity in other way we can say the totality of the genes species as well as ecosystem is called as the biodiversity as we know that there are a very endangered species are there rare species and threatened species are there for the conservation of that species as well as for the maintain the balance of the our ecosystem our earth our environment the conservation of biodiversity is very necessary so what methods are used for the conservation of biodiversity mainly two methods are used for the conservation of biodiversity first method is called as the in situ conservation method and second method is called as the ex situ conservation method so two methods are used in situ conservation method is also called as the on site conservation method and ex situ conservation method is also called as off site conservation method so these two methods are mainly used for the conservation for the protection of the biodiversity when we talk about in situ conservation method the species are protected at their natural habitat and when we talk about ex situ conservation the species are kept into a particular area a particular laboratory and there they are conserved and protect so these are two different things in in situ the animals are live in their natural habitat and in ex situ conservation method the species are taken to a particular area and there at that particular area these species are conserved when we are talking about the in situ conservation methods in situ conservation methods maybe we can say national parks are the example of in situ conservation conservation methods as well as wildlife sanctuaries are the examples of the in situ conservation methods and biosphere reserves so all these are the examples of in situ conservation method so first talk about we are talking about the types of in situ conservation method first we are talking about national parks then we will talk about wildlife sanctuaries and third we will talk about biosphere reserves so when we talk about that state government declare a particular area as a national park or the wildlife sanctuary if we, uh, in national park these are the large protected area where a particular species as well as its entire ecosystem are protected Uh, in india about 105 national parks are available and uh, about 1. we can say 1.23% of total geographical area of india is def defined as a national parks so in national park only tourism are permitted uh, no other activities like grazing of animals as well as uh, uh, hunting of animals as well as uh, uh, some other other activities like the we can say other activities like the collection of the productive material so all these are prohibited into the national parks now some examples of national parks may be we can say and national parks are different from the zoo because in zoo 
animals are live in the cages but in national parks animals live freely so the examples of national parks we know that there are about 103 to 5 national parks are there so at first some i am giving you some names of the national parks first is periyar national park first is periyar national park uh, periyar national park is located into the kerala so in simplest way you can remember this national park as that keral ki pari okay so keral ki pari which is silent so silent valley is also there in kerala silent valley as well as periyar are located into the kerala so keral ki pari which is low very silent so you can remember it by these terms uh, second we can say that uh, kanha national park as well as madhav national park and omkar national park so we know that all these three names are the names related to god kanha which is related to lord krishna madha which is the other name of lord krishna and omkara which is a name of lord shiva so all these are the name of some go uh, gods so all these three national parks are located into the madhya pradesh mp kanha madhav and omkar all these which are the related to god names these are located into the madhya pradesh and if we are bound all these three if we are bonding all these three so it will be called as the bandhav so if we are bond these three it will be called as the bandhav so bandhavgarh national park is also located into the madhya pradesh so uh, first we learn about periyar national park as well as silent valley are located into the kerala kanha national park madhav national park bandhavgarh national park as well as omkar national park are located into the uh, madhya pradesh as then we can say uh, gangotri national park Gangotri National Park as well as Jim Corbett both are located into Uttarakhand both are located into the Uttarakhand in simplest way you can learn this that Ganga's gym is in Uttarakhand Ganga's gym is located into the Uttarakhand so Gangotri as well as Jim Corbett both national parks are present into the Uttarakhand then we can say Hazaribagh National Park Hazaribagh National Park is located into this Jharkhand then Kaziranga National Park uh we can say kajiranga national park as well as oranga national park so when we are there is the sound of ranga oranga as well as kajiranga national park so both rang are located into the assam in assam kajiranga national park as well as oranga national park are located then we can say that uh, Uh, Gir National Park, which is located into the Gujarat, Gir, G for Gir and G for Gujarat. So you can learn that Gir National Park, which is related to the conservation of the lions mainly. So Gir, and it is located into the Gujarat. Then Sundarbans are located into the West Bengal. Then Desert National Park, as we know that desert, uh, the main area of Rajasthan is the desert. So Desert National Park is located into the Rajasthan. So these are the some names of national parks which are located into the India. Mainly tourism is 
permitted only other activities are not permitted in national parks so we can say that greater protection is occur in national parks less protection is occur in wildlife sanctuary and very less protection is occur into the biosphere reserve next we were talking about the uh, next we are talking about the wildlife sanctuaries wildlife sanctuaries are those area those protected area which are useful for the protection of the particular species if we are talking about the conservation of species we can say that wildlife sanctuaries are available and in india about 530 about 530 wildlife sanctuaries are available are located into the india which we can say conserve the 3.58% of total geographical area of india about 3.58% total geographical area is covered with the wildlife sanctuaries in india the maximum wildlife sanctuaries are present into the andaman nicobar uh, about we can say 96 wildlife sanctuaries are there and if we are talking about the states the highest amount of wildlife sanctuaries are located in the maharashtra which is about 40 wildlife sanctuaries are present into the Uh, maharashtra the it does not allow any hunting and any human activities but some kind of uh, activities like grazing of animals as well as some collection of the some protective material from the forest these are these can be permitted into the wildlife sanctuary which are not permitted which are prohibited into the national park but these such type of uh, uh, activities can be done into the wildlife sanctuary but there is no harm can occur in any species which cannot be harmed any species so uh, the example of such uh, uh, wildlife sanctuaries are chilka um, a uh, lake bird sanctuary which is located into the odisha and uh, bandipun uh, sanctuary which is located into the karnataka and in rajasthan we can say that uh, kevla dev national uh, wildlife sanctuary which is very uh, we can say only siberian crane are seen in that particular area as well as uh, we can say uh, sariska wildlife sanctuary which is located into the rajasthan so these are the names of some wildlife sanctuaries third uh, ek, uh, the another is sultanpur uh, sultanpur wildlife sanctuary which is located into the haryana next we can say that uh, third in situ conservation method is biosphere reserve biosphere reserves biosphere reserves these are the multi purpose protected area these are very useful as a educational mode uh, these are very useful as we can say for the develop it develop the conserve uh, area as well as for the training programs so these are the a- multi purpose areas these are very large areas also and it include some national parks as well as uh, some wildlife sanctuaries also so we can say it create awareness about the environment also so if we are talking about a biosphere there is a panchmari biosphere reserves which have a one national park one national park as well as two wildlife sanctuaries are there two wildlife sanctuaries are there in a particular biosphere reserve so these areas are very large area uh, there are some less pro- uh, restriction are there and research per re- uh, these uh, research can be done in biosphere reserves area and um, Uh, some names of biosphere reserves are nilgiri danda devi as well as sundarban so all these are the names of some biosphere reserves and in india about 18 biosphere reserves are located so these are the names of some in situ conservation methods first we are talk about national parks then we talk about uh, bi- uh, wildlife sanctuary and then finally biosphere reserves there are some areas or uh, which are called we can say there are some areas which are called as the conservative areas 
these are called as the conservation areas also in conservation areas are those areas for example we can say these are the buffer zones if there is a area which is a wildlife sanctuary is located and there is a particular area which is related to tiger reserves the area between two protected areas the area which is uh, if there is a particular wildlife sanctuary is there and if there is a presence of tiger reserve the middle portion is called as the buffer zone it is the buffer zone the middle zone it is called as the conservation area uh, in india about these conservation reasons are about 65 area and in jammu and kashmir the highest about 34 conservative areas are located so these are the some terms related to in situ conservation method when we talk about ex situ conservation method we know that ex in ex situ conservation method some genes or chromosomes of the species or species are transferred to the particular area and there we uh, preserve that particular species and these are very useful methods and uh, we can say that uh, it is the done Uh, ex situ conservation is done outside the natural habitat of that particular species the examples of the ex situ conservation are gene banks dna banks botanical gardens as well as zoological gardens and cryo preservation is done into the ex situ conservation where the temperature is kept about minus 196 degree and uh, the species or the genes of the species are preserved into the liquid nitrogen that process is called called as the cryo preservation so these are called as the ex situ method for the conservation of various plants as well as various animals so these are two modes related to conservation and protection of the biodiversity beside these there are many ways to protect the protect and conserve the various biodiversity so these may be first we can say a for afforestation method a uh, forestation method uh, for the we know that plantation of trees very necessary if we are talking about the conservation of biodiversity then to regulate the forest fire regulate the forest fire there are some techniques and some devices are used for the uh, control the forest fire for by hunting regulations by hunting regulations government make some rules and regulations some laws to, by which hunting may be prevented as well as we can say mm, some seminars as well as some programs are conducted by the government and other authorities by which the conservation of biodiversity can be done so these are the topics related to conservation of biodiversity and these are very important topic which is uh, uh, in many competitive exams this such type of questions related to where such kind of national park is located these are come uh, thank you so